Now that you have determined your strategic directions, you will determine measurable outcomes for each direction. You will start by asking yourself, how will I know I am successful? You will need your time tracker worksheet for this module. You may feel a little lost at this point. Perhaps you are just thinking, I don't know how I will know. I just want to be successful. If you're feeling this way, feel free to contact your champion. It may help, though, to hear about some standard outcomes for a gentle birth instructor in their first year to give you a sense of reasonable expectations. It is reasonable in most places to expect to have 10 couples a month registering for your workshops by the end of your first year as an instructor. Consider what this means for market percentage. You'll have to do a little basic algebra, but I'll walk you through it. You can find the formula on your measurable outcomes worksheet. For example, if your city or service region has 5,000 births per year, you will write 120 over 5,000 equals X over 100. You may remember from junior high school that the next step is to cross multiply. 120 times 100 is 12,000, so you now have 12,000 equals 5,000 X. 12,000 divided by 5,000 is 2.4 meaning 120 couples per year is 2.4% of the yearly market for your city or region. In Ireland, gentle birth serves about 1% of the market, and we are growing every day, so 2.4% is a good goal to reach for. In order to meet this goal, you will need to consider earnestly how many people you speak to that you think you can convert into workshop attendees. One in three is a reasonable expectation, though this will depend on you getting quite comfortable with your pitch, which we will discuss in detail later. This means that in order to get 10 workshop attendees, you will need to have 30 conversations about your workshop. You will have to pitch your workshop 30 times. This may sound like significantly more work than you are expecting to do promoting your workshops. It is important to know that if you expect to make being a gentle birth instructor into a significant source of income, you will need to invest a significant amount of effort. It is, after all, your business, and you will be building a client base in your market. To figure out how much time you should expect to devote to building your business, it can be helpful to look at how you are spending your time now. Please pause the video and print the time tracker worksheet now if you haven't already. To begin, look at the weekly time tracker at the top of the worksheet. Here, you can estimate how much time you spend each day on different kinds of activities. You may have other professional obligations, another job or a current birth business, for example. You can also include school and schoolwork in this category if you are a student. Entertainment should include things like television and non-essential phone and internet time. Self-care should include hygiene, meals, doctor's visits, and anything else you need to do to care for yourself and those in your family. The other categories should be self-explanatory, but please reach out if you have any questions about them. For this exercise, you don't need to be exact, just take your best guess. You will see a daily tracker and a key below the weekly tracker. In the key, pick a color of pen or marker to represent each of the activity types and fill in the box next to that activity with the color you select. On a day that is typical for you, fill in the daily tracker each hour using the color or colors that best describe how you spent that hour. Consider downloading an app. Quality Time is a fantastic free one to track your electronic device usage. Compare your daily tracker to your estimate. How accurately did you estimate how you spend your time? Are there changes you'd like to make? Mindfulness can help with feelings of overwhelm and busyness. There's a Zen quote that says, you should sit in meditation for 20 minutes a day, unless you're too busy. Then you should sit for an hour. We do not want to glamorize busyness as is often done in our culture. Instead, we want to look at our priorities. Are there commitments you can say no to? In his book, Essentialism, Greg McYoan says, essentialists see trade-offs as an inherent part of life, not as an inherently negative part of life. Instead of asking, what do I have to give up? They ask, what do I want to go big on? He writes, only once you give yourself permission to stop trying to do it all, to stop saying yes to everyone, can you make your highest contribution towards the things that really matter. Can you 